let's have a look at the absolute value. So the first possibility we could have. So why is the absolute value of function x? So what's that saying? Yeah. What we end up doing is we get that where it's negative, the y values, it now becomes positive. Because we're saying absolute value of function x. So we can never get a negative value for y. So whatever is below the x-axis goes above the x-axis. That's basically what I'm trying to say there. And so that's what I meant when I said symmetry in the x-axis. We looked in, with the old graph and the new graph, we'd see symmetry in the x-axis. The actual new curve itself is not symmetric in the x-axis. Now, if it's function absolute value x, and now what we're saying is we can only substitute in positive numbers. So we can get negative numbers as an answer, but we can only substitute positive numbers in. So that's now going to, it'll be the y-axis we're looking at. And this one is symmetric in the y-axis. Right. Let's draw the picture, it's easier. So what we're saying is we can never substitute in a negative number. So everything on the left disappears, because we can never substitute those numbers in. But whatever's on the right will get reflected over. Because when we substitute in negative 1, we'll get the same answer as when we substitute in positive 1. When we substitute in negative 2, we'll get the same answer as we get when we substitute in positive 2. Because we're actually substituting in the absolute value. So we're always substituting in positive numbers. So that one would reflect over. So that would be function absolute value x. Absolute value of y is equal to function x. So what's happening here? Okay, I can substitute in positive and negative numbers, but I can only end up with positive answers. It's always going to be the absolute value of y. Is that what it means? Let's see. There's going to be still some sort of symmetry with the x-axis on this one. And this is what we'll end up doing. We're going to reflect the part where the original graph is positive in the x-axis. If we look at the picture, sometimes it's easier to see what's happening. There's the original graph. So the, the bit below has gone, and the bit above has been reflected below. So absolute y, value of y equals function x. The, uh, what's below disappears. And then what's above reflects down. Let's try the next one. What will happen if we go absolute value of y is equal to function absolute value of x? So now we're only substituting in positive numbers. And our answers for what we're drawing, well, where it exists, it'll be plus or minus. So it's going to have symmetry in both axes. We're going to be playing with both axes here. That is what we'll end up doing. It's just the first quadrant. Whatever is in the first quadrant will get reflected into all four. So if we have a look at random graph, whatever is in the first quadrant gets reflected into all four. So that's absolute value of y is equal to function absolute value of x. Because I guess what we're saying is we've got a combination of the last one that we just looked at, absolute value of y is equal to function x, and the second one that we looked at, whereas y equals function absolute value of x. See, now we can get some really interesting graphs. Y equals the absolute value of function absolute value of X. Now, if you like, we're combining the first one and the second one together. So what should happen there? We're going to get reflection in the X axis, symmetry in the Y axis. What we'll end up doing, okay, what the part where X is uh, greater than zero, we're going to reflect that in the Y axis, and then we're going to reflect the result. What? There we go. There's the original graph. That we know is y equals function absolute value of x. y is equal to the absolute value of function x. So if I had just said, find the absolute value of this graph, I would say, hey, whatever's below would be reflected above. So now I'll grab whatever's below and reflect it above. OK, 
Okay, let's try this one. Absolute value of y is equal to absolute value of function x. Okay, what's going to happen here? So again, we're going to have symmetry in the x-axis. We're also going to have some reflection in the x-axis. So we're going to reflect the part of the original function where the original function was negative. That's going to get reflected in the x-axis. Then we're going to reflect that result in the x-axis. So hang on. There's the original graph. We already determined y equals absolute value of function x looks like that. But we're now saying, which one was it? Absolute value of y equals... So when we did absolute value of y equals some function, look at that. We get a reflection above and below. What a beautiful graph. <laughs> All right, I think that's enough. All right. Again, just a handful there to play around with.